On today's episode, I'm going to take a look at this, the Ender 5 S1. It's a little over $500, but it's got some nice features. I'll explain it all on today's Film of Friday. Film of Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This video is also sponsored by creality 3 dofficialcom by ComGrow. Full disclosure, ComGrow did give me this Ender 5 S1 for an honest review. They sell it on their site for about $580. It comes as a kit, so you have to assemble it. It's not too bad. It comes with a manual, and the manual has some decent pictures. It took me about 45 minutes from start to finish. When I was done, I realized this is an incredibly solid machine, more solid than an Ender 3. It comes with the Sprite extruder, but it's actually the high temperature version. So it's got the direct drive and also a high temperature heat break so you can print high temperature plastics. It's also got a really unique cooling system, much better than an Ender 3. The display is actually a touch screen. I don't love this touch screen. I can't recommend it, but they keep putting it on these high-end machines. But overall, it's not bad. It does come with a filament runout sensor, and it also has a PC-coated bed like I found on other S1s. It really sticks, and it's magnetic, so you can remove it. It does come with a 16-point auto-level system using the CR touch sensor, and it worked really well for me. You also can manually level it. They have that option in the menu. It comes with the silicone rubber feet underneath the bed, so no more springs to worry about. One thing that was irritating is that the bed always goes down no matter what you do. If you start a print or if you want auto level anything, it goes down and then you got to wait for it to come up. It kills a lot of time. It did come with a small spool of PLA filament and allowed me to print their sample files. There was a Benchy on the SD card and also this little bunny. And it didn't take long to print these, but it wasn't any faster than any other machine I've got. Print quality is quite good. I printed a couple CHEP cubes with some red PLA. And then I went a little bigger and I made a spiral mode vase. And this came out really smooth. Now I did shut off power loss recovery. I had to do that through a G-code command. You can't do it through their menu, which is limited. This menu is limited on their touch screen. But the print quality is really smooth. So then I went bigger. I used their filament and I printed the same vase, but bigger. And it came out just as nice. So then I wanted to test it even further. Because it's direct drive, I wanted to try it with some TPU. So I had this red TPU that I have mounted on it now, and this stuff worked great. It's a great print, folds, collapses, and comes back. Really, really nice print. Something else this printer offers, because it's not a bed slinger or bed movement, it stays in one place, so you can get side panels for this. There's acrylic side panels you can get, a door and three sides, nothing on the top, so it's not completely enclosed, but it can stop drafts from coming in, which will affect like ABS prints, you know, may cause it to warp. So that could stop that. It also keeps little hands out of there while it's printing, so they can't get hurt. But it's going to cost you about $100 more to get those side panels. The PC bed material actually sticks so well, you really got to flex it to get prints off. So some people have complained it sticks too well, which is strange, but it actually makes it easier to get your first prints to stick and then continue to print without popping off. So if it's a little harder to remove, yeah, that's a problem, but I'd rather have things stick than not stick. But that seems to be common with a lot of these new printers from Creality. They're using the same material, and it really grabs. Overall, it's got some great features. It's got the all-metal hot end, so you can print 300 degrees C right out of the box. It's got direct drive, so you can print TPU easily. It's got great cooling for PLA. It's got a filament runout sensor. It's got 16-point auto level with the CR touch sensor. And it's even got silicone feet underneath the bed, so you don't have the springs to worry about, although you do still have adjusters, so you can clamp it down a little bit. The movement is smooth. It's got silent drivers, although I found it's a little bit noisy, uh, a little bit noisier than, say, an Ender 3. But... Overall, I think it's a good, solid machine. And then you put those sides on it and then close for that extra $100, you've got a professional-looking machine. So I think they did a good job on this. I'd love to see it around $499. I think above $500 is a little too much in today's market. But it's still a nice machine. If you're looking for this type of printer where the bed goes up and down and doesn't move, it's definitely one to consider. Now, if you're looking to get a machine like this, I suggest you check out Creality3Dofficial.com by ComGrow. Creality3Dofficial.com is an official reseller of Creality printers, and they've got pretty much everything you could want. 
including the Ender 3, the Ender 5, even my favorite Ender 2 Pro. And if you want to get one of these Ender 5 S1s, like I said, they have it for about $579. So check out Creality3dofficial.com. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way. And if nothing else, click on that Film of Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time, right here at Film of Friday.